welcome brothers and sisters in Christ to another episode of Called to Serve, a program allowing priests to share their vocation stories. Today we are honored and blessed to have with us on the show Father Philip Terrasa. Father Philip was born in Spain and as a Jesuit novice asked to be sent to India. He was ordained in 15th August 1947 and came to India in 1948. Thereafter he completed his formation and studies in India. After his priestly life and ordination he has mainly been involved in spiritual guidance, psychological counseling and retreat direction. He has also assisted in village life experiences, conducting camps and study groups for the children. Welcome to this show. Thank you so much. Father, can you tell us about what inspired you to choose the priesthood? There was nothing concrete that inspired me. Actually, I never discovered my vocation. My vocation grew with me because there was a very religious atmosphere at home. My parents were very saintly. And uh, the fact that uh, out of nine siblings, six are religious, so that there was oh, a wow. big experience. Mm -hmm. So as I grew up, somehow I started when I was about five years old. I used to play the kind of a priest acting. Oh, wow. So therefore, somehow it grew in me. So when it came the time to decide, then obviously the first thing I thought of was a priesthood. And since I was working, I mean, I was studying in a Jesuit school. So then uh, the idea was to be a Jesuit priest. So that's how the thing started. And what inspired me for that was simply my love for Jesus, mm, desire to somehow uh, do what Jesus was doing, mm, dedicate myself to him in total love and to the people that I could. And that is why I offered myself to come to India, to be able to serve more people that uh, in Spain at that time there were plenty of priests. So uh, were your parents reluctant because out of nine, six had already chosen, I mean five had already chosen and to allow you as well was it difficult convincing them? No, they, see, they were very religious persons. So actually they were happy, they pain because we were going, going joining together, my brother and myself together. So in one shot they showed two children less. Okay. But they were happy, they were okay. very happy. Eh? They were quite proud that so many of their children had become religious. Mm. That's wonderful. But why India? I mean, of all the countries uh, leaving Europe, to a different continent altogether. Mm. See, we had a mission here, a number of fathers were working in India. And therefore, obviously, I could have thought of many other places. Actually, I thought of South America, because then the same language. Yes, Spanish. But since we were working in India, so naturally I offered myself for India, okay. for the province of Mumbai. All right. So India as a country is very different as compared to Europe, as compared to Spain. So, when you came here, there must have been certainly a lot of difficulties, firstly, as in, in language, uh, language barriers, the culture. Uh, how did it work for you? Actually, it was very interesting you come in. But when I came, there was a big culture shock. Absolutely. Because I couldn't understand anything. I didn't know any English at that time. I could not understand anything. Climate was different, food was different, everything was different. So it was very different. For three months until I began, to master a little bit English, okay. I found it very difficult. But not even once I thought of kind of go back. Really? Uh, I said I determined to come and here I was. Okay, that's, happy. that's amazing. What was that that kept you going? See, what kept me going was what has always kept me going. My love for Jesus, my commitment to him, desire to do good to as many people as possible. That is why I, I what promoted me to come. Okay. 
Baba, can you please tell me what was the theme of your ordination and why did you pick it? See, there was no special theme, but for me, <clears throat> the ordination was a very important moment in my life. And like many other people who felt very great devotion, very deeply moved. I was deeply moved when the priest lying down just at the beginning of the ordination service. At that moment, somehow, as I was lying down on the ground, I felt that God kind of pinch of so, uh, dust from the earth, and with that pinch of dust, it was going to work wonders in my life. And that has always been in my mind. Eh? I, what am I? I'm a pinch of dust in the hands of an almighty God, doing great things my, with a might like myself. That has been my position. Therefore, that has never left me. Then, of course, I got involved in the ministry and the satisfaction of being able to hear confessions, to bring people back to God, to uh, celebrate the Eucharist, uh, to kind of, above all, to make people come to know Jesus. For me, this is my uh, kind, kind of uh, passionate dream, eh? to bring people to know Jesus, to love Jesus passionately. Then everything else, I feel, takes place right. proper way. So, Father, uh, next year will be your 60th year serving as a priest and your 73rd year in India. So, what were your main areas of ministry in the country? See, actually, I wanted to work in the villages. Okay. But because my health was not very good, somehow the superiors did not allow me. So, in that case, they put me into counseling. So, I did a rather two diploma courses in counseling, and I started there. But immediately I got into spiritual guidance, retreat direction, and spiritual uh, psychological counseling. And that has been all this, the, my work, with youth, uh, lay people, religious, all kinds of people. So I covered the whole of India, giving retreats all over, all the, the, the states of India. So that has been my main thing. In a way, I regret I had not had pastoral experience in a parish. But the, the pastoral experience I had in the spiritual direction, eh? and that, that has been my main work all these years. Right. So since 62, that has been my work. With 59 years as a priest, I'm sure there might have been a lot of ups and downs. Can you tell us what were your challenges and how did you cope up with them? In a way, I didn't have any great problems eh, that some other people have, <coughs> great difficulties. The main problem I encountered, which was the constant challenge in my life, was that my health. I was quite sick most of the time. Eh? number of uh, surgeries, number of uh, hospitalizations. So that was a constant thing. To be able to work with splitting headaches, that was a challenge. Eh? Further, the, the furthest challenge I had to face was that I had to work, try to bring people to God, when I felt myself in total spiritual darkness. So that was a very difficult thing. Eh? So that was a constant struggle. Outside difficulties, I didn't have really great difficulties. Usually I was well accepted. In a way, I, I, don't, I don't think any, I cannot point out to great big problems I can encounter. It was mainly the situation in which I was. My poor health, having to work in spite of all this, dragging myself, and doing it when I did not feel in God in my life. So that was not very easy. But of course, God is good enough, so occasionally He gives you some brighter moments <laughs> that give you, keep you going. Okay. Father, as you just mentioned that you yourself faced these spiritually dry moments and yet you had to bring others uh, from the flock towards spirituality. So how did you manage that? Well, it was, as I mentioned, it was not easy. But um, somehow I had such a deep longing for God. Though I didn't experience Him, it, that kept me going. 
what happens, whatever happens, keep on. Hmm? And the fact that I realize that in my nothingness, I was touching people's lives. So many people now, when, I, when I'm old, come and thank me, thank you so much, you saved my life, you transformed my life. So then I realized that God was working in my nothingness, in my darkness, he was working. So that kept me going, kind of fine. God is with me, even if I don't feel it, it's okay, I can carry on. That's yeah. what kept me going. So even in your spiritual dryness, you were able to bring others to the Lord. I think that's, that's something that's really beautiful. Yeah, I, see, I was able to win. God was able to win that through Through you, of course. <laughs> you also mentioned during your dark moments, God gave you some moments. Can you elaborate right. on those? Yeah, see, carry on 56 years feeling God kind of abandoned you. Hmm? Not easy. So somehow or other he has to support, or he had to support me. So I had a number of experiences. One was in, in 71, I still remember 7th May, 71. Hmm? When I was very low, extremely feeling spiritual drain, uh, tired, exhausted from my work uh, with the children. And then I went to make a special retreat just to see what I could pick up. That retreat was after hell, terribly difficult. But somehow, I still remember on the seventh day, I was in such a misery that I said, Lord, if this is your will, fine, let my your will be done. Hmm? So that gave me somehow, the, the darkness continued, the pain continued, but it gave me a kind of something that happened to me. I had a strength to carry on. Later on, on the last day of the month retreat, then God gave me a powerful experience of her. Somehow I experienced the Heavenly Father telling me, Philip, I love you. And Jesus confirming it, I also love you. And the Holy Spirit, I also love you. And the, the promise, don't be afraid, we will always be with you. That was, of course, a big moment in my life, which has always sustained me. However bad I may felt, I said, no, he promised that he will be me. So if I feel abandoned now, and certainly I know I'm not abandoned. So that was his sustaining. Okay. There have been other moments, another very important moment too, was um, two years ago when uh, I was very sick, I was dying. Actually, one night I felt myself dying and I saw heaven open, bright light of heaven coming to me. When uh, the doctor explained to me what had been happening to me, uh, the, the crisis, but then he added that also you suffer from Parkinson. And that shocked me because my Jesuit brother died of that. And I knew how terrible it was, he said. But again, the grace of God said, okay, Lord, this is all you want for me. I feel frightened. You want it, let it be. That filled me with tremendous joy and peace that even now after two years, I still, I can. So these are moments which somehow God uplifts you out of your darkness. Now I can't say I'm in, dark, in the darkness. I'm bright, yeah. and that bright light is still in there. So you felt God even in that near-to-death experience and in spite of suffering from Parkinson's, you seem so cheerful and you know, you don't really seem gloomy at all. So it really must be credited to God, right? Definitely. I, I know it was not my doing. I know it was His grace that gave me the, the courage to say, okay, I surrender, <laughs> do it. <laughs> That's great. So that is a kind of, uh, that total surrender to God, accepting what comes is coming from His loving will, and then that made me feel happy. So over 59 years, Father, you must have had quite a few cherishing moments, and is there some particular ones that you would like to share with us today? Beautiful moments have been, <coughs> when a, a man comes totally broken to make a retreat, totally, completely broken, psychologically, emotionally, steeped in sin. And after eight days, he comes out a completely different person. Obviously, it's a very joyful time for me. Absolutely. That you see, God has worked so much wonder through my mediation, but that he has touched it. To see, experience God working in the pure future. And this has happened many times in different ways, with children in the school, with grown-ups, with men, women, religious. And so that this is what has been sustaining me more and more. Not what I felt internally, but what I saw God doing through me. So that was okay. We carry on, despite the <laughs> Any other incidents that touched you or, I mean, that was, uh, 
you know, a, a great moment of rejoicing for you? This would be uh, what I would consider the greatest moments in my life. But there's been other moments when suddenly you are in the dark and you get this out of nowhere, an inspiration. Mm -hmm. It comes to me as a, as a, let us call it a mantra or something like that. Eh? Yes. When I was again in the dark, very feeling very bad, and I sense deeply within me, this let go of yourself in me, trusting blindly in my lap. That came with him. Another instance, very strange, I was in Missouri giving a retreat, mm -hmm. and I walked in the garden, I picked up a, a seed of a cypress tree. Okay. There were three balls and one little one. Okay. I picked up the thing in the heart of the Trinity. That's what we did in the heart of the Trinity. That's what God I, was I talking to, to you through nature. <laughs> right. So these are other moments in my life that have been very profitable, very useful. Mm -hmm. Then there are, of course, the people who come and thank me, which I know when they say me, Father, you thank me so much. So the father, Heavenly Father, not I. But anyhow, that comforts me and give me great joy, tremendous. My life is a deep gratitude to God. Mm? That is what my life is. Eh? A deep uh, hymn of thanksgiving and praise to God for the wonders He works through me, for me nothing. What is the vision that you have for the church? The vision I have for the church is very much <coughs> my obsession. Hmm? A, a church in India that will be simple, poor, more Indianized, not, that people can recognize as part of culture in many ways. A, a church which is truly committed to the Lord, that people will see us, they see somehow or other Jesus in us. As Gandhiji said, if Christians were a little more like Jesus, India would fall at the feet of Jesus in one day. That is what my dream. That all of us, clergy, children, grown-ups, uh, everybody, uh, as a Christian, will be a little more Christ-like. Live our Christianity to the full. Not namke eh? <laughs> but to the full, kind of, uh, okay. Totally committed. People know we stand for certain values, we stand for certain things, and we are ready to, to, to die for that. Eh? That, I feel, is what I need, that church needs. We have had beautiful examples in Katmahan. Some people like that died testifying to the faith of Jesus. The more people we have like that, the more I feel that the church will be rooted in India and prosper. So that is my, my main vision. Is there a message that you can give the youth who are discerning their vocations mm. right now? See, the, more to the youth, I would say for the parents. Mm. If the parents educate the children with love, I've seen so many broken lives because of parents who didn't know how to educate their children. Either one extreme, too kind, or the other extreme, too strict. Mm -hmm. yes. And then the children go to So my concern for the parents is to educate them with great love, but with discipline. Mm -hmm. You have to punish, you punish, but punish with love and tenderness. Bring them close to Jesus, let, let them learn to mm -hmm. pray in an intimate way with the Lord. Right. And then be kind of train them for the future, to realize that they are going to create a world which is very different from the values of Jesus. Therefore, they are ready for that. Ready for their own awakening sexuality. Ready for the difficulties and problems they are going to encounter. Then I feel the vocations. I am convinced the vocation comes when they are deeply committed to the Lord right. and committed to other people. That's more right. ready to give than to receive, more ready to work for others than to work for yourself. That That's is right. what I feel. Absolutely. For the priesthood. Thank you so much for sharing your wonderful testimony of your vocation and your ministry with us. We are deeply honored to have you on this show. For me, it is a, a privilege <laughs> you have given me a chance to speak what I feel so dear to me. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias, Father Philip, and for all the wonderful service you have given us in India.
thank you for watching this show and I hope it has inspired you in some way. As always, do pray for our priests and we will catch you on our next episode. Thank you and God bless.